In this video, we're going to be working with the Hemdata Minidata Logger and setting up the configuration files for it. The Minidata Logger has a USB to micro USB connector so you can access the local files and configure the data logger itself. It is set up by default to work with OBD2, which is the 16 pinout, and then it also has the option for using a SIM card for cellular services provided by you yourself purchased at either AT&T, T-Mobile, or some other third-party company. So let's go ahead and let's plug this device in and get it configured. You're, again, you're going to need a USB to micro USB connector. Let's plug in the data logger. You should see a pop-up appear on your screen. Now, by default, the first time you do this, you'll likely have a prefs.txt file. Don't worry about that. We're going to overwrite that. For this example, we're going to configure our device for OBD2. So first, check the drive that you have. Mine's H. Yours might be G, E. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you know what it is. Next, go ahead and load up the Dawn Edit 2 software. At the initial install of the application, you'll likely have a bigger list of samples, but it doesn't matter at the moment. All we're going to do is load up the OBD2 configuration database. So click on the file, open database, go to your C drive, and then go to the Dawn folder where it should have been installed, or at least the default is there, and then click on databases, OBD, and then OBD mini. Now it'll load up a list of all your signals that you can actually log when you're in OBD to logging mode. The ones that are checked are the ones that will be logged. The ones that are unchecked obviously won't be logged. Now let's say you want to select a group of them. You can click one, hold down the shift just like in any, any Windows program and then check one box and they'll all be selected. The same can be said in the reverse. So I can check one and they'll all be deselected. Next, let's go ahead and let's create our configuration file. So click on the logger, click create mini logger config file. Locate the directory. I'm already in H. I'm good. Don't check any of this at the moment. We'll get to that later. And then go ahead and click create. Now if we jump back into our mini logger directory, we can see a config.txt file has been generated. I'm going to go ahead and open this up in Notepad++. And notice it only has three lines. The first line defines what is going to be logged. Now this is all in binary, so don't worry about the customization of the hex to binary, whatever it may be. Just know that it's a custom code that's defined by Hemdata. The second line is a confirmation. If the second line does not match the first line, you need to recreate the config.txt file. Now everything from the third line and beyond is just comments. So you can have a third line, a fourth line, a fifth line. Again, those won't be executed when the logger reads this file. So go ahead, close that out. And next, let's create our preference file. So again, click on the logger and then say create mini logger prefs file. Set your directory. Now we'll skip Wi-Fi and upload at this test at the moment. We're just going to log local data. So go ahead and click create. Now if we come back to our mini logger and click on the prefs file, there's pretty much nothing in there except for some reason CAN1 baud and CAN2 baud rate are set to zero. And the reason for that is we are not going to be logging the CAN1 or CAN2. Now if you're confused as to what you should set it as or possibly you do want to collect the baud rate, you can set it here in the thousands. So if it's the baud rates 2,000 or 250,000 set 250,000. If it's 500,000 set 500,000. If you're unsure what it is, you can actually set the baud rates to 1 for CAN1 and CAN2 and it will be auto recognized. So let's go ahead and let's do that for this example. Next, close it out and then let's eject this and hook this up to our vehicle. Okay, so we're going to install the OBD2 logger. Now, if you notice, in the top right here we have our OBD2 port, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug this in. 
Now, you might have noticed a little blue light that flickered. That means it's been connected. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the vehicle on. After we turn the vehicle on, you'll see a blue light start up, and it'll start blinking. Within a few seconds, it'll transition from blue to a green light, and green light means that the data logger is now logging data. I recommend you do this for about a minute, or you go take the vehicle around for a drive to actually collect data. Next, we'll go ahead and we'll turn the vehicle off. Once we've turned the vehicle off, it'll then transition from green to red. And what the red light does is the red light says, we are shutting down. Then, from the red light, we'll transition to a white light or multicolor light, whatever one you want to define it as, but it's defined in documentation as the white light. The white light says to the data logger, connect to Wi-Fi or cellular if you've been set and transmit data. If it hasn't been set, it'll just keep going and then eventually it'll shut off. Once you see no more lights, it is then safe to unplug the data logger. All right, so we've just logged data to our HemData mini logger and we now want to extract the data from it. We are not doing Wi-Fi, we're not doing cellular, we're just doing local data. So go ahead, plug your device back into your computer. A window should pop up. Okay, it's saying that we had some files that we logged today. Great, excellent. So next, let's go ahead and let's open up the Dawn Edit 2 software. Make sure we have the OBD2 configuration set. So we're going to open the database I had previously, the mini. And then go ahead up to where it says Logger and select Convert Mini Logger Data Files to CSV. So it says, okay, where are these iOS files located? That's the binary conversion files that we need to decode that have been in, encoded. So for me, it looks like it's still located in H. I'm going to select H and then same directory. No, let's change it up to that desktop directory I have. Okay. And then make sure you have use absolute timestamp and convert to local time. Convert to local time allows it so that if you're a different time zone than the UTC time zone, it'll actually convert it to your time zone. And then you at, use absolute timestamp adds a new column in the front with a time column so that you get an actually timestamp and you don't have to reference the conversion for time within the date time columns that are generated. And then also make sure you merge the GPS files into the CSV. So go ahead, click convert, and notice it converted one file. So let's close that out. Let's close this program out. Let's go check out our files. And it should be located within. Or there it is, yes. And then if we double click this, We have our time, we have our engine, we have whatever has been transmitted. I didn't really run it too long, so you won't see any data for this instance, but sometimes you'll see zeros. But I only ran it for about a half a second, so nothing was really logged. But that's how you would actually see the data file.